like, uh, ah, all right, it looks like I'm unmuted now. All right, we'll stop. We're, we'll start now. We're on Chaf Aleph, Ahmed Aleph, Sacha Shabbos, Tap Line, Tana Rabbanan, Shmaka Blat today. So Tana Rabbanan, Kol Elu Sha'amru, Ein Maligim Ember Shabbos, all these different wicks that we mentioned that one is not allowed to go ahead and use in Shabbos. But Oisimahen Medura, but you can make a large bonfire with them. In other words, we're not worried about the, the you know, going, going out. If it's going to be a large fire, then there is no issue of tilting or rekindling. It's a large fire. Uh, whether to use its light or to uh, heat up from it, whether it's on the ground or on the stove. The only thing that we answered was to make a wick out of it. Uh, that's the only thing in, in terms of these different materials that were listed in the beginning of the parak of the uh, beginning of the parak of the uh, of the second parak. Fine. And then one of the uh, items listed was as we went on, we said we we're discussing different fuels. So he said, not pitch, not wax, but like shemen kik. What's shemen kik? So my shemen kik. So I'm a shmuel. Shall see in the cold nachusa yama. So I asked all the the sailors out in the sea. Vamerli aifechad yesh b'karcha yama kik shemo. There's a certain bird out there that's called the kik. It's called the keek bird, and that bird, I guess there's oil that can be extracted from this bird, and that was used, that's the type of uh, oil that would be forbidden to fuel. Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yehud Omar, Mashcha de Kaza, right? Mashcha de Kaza, uh, some sort of, uh, as Rashi says, uh, um, uh, the, from the cotton seed, right? Uh, oil from cotton seed. And Rishlok Hashomar, Kikayon de Yaina, right? It's a Diyona, right? It's Kikayon de Yaina. The Kikayon tree that was in, 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 by, by, in Sefer Yona, it was that tree, that same type of tree. It was from that type of tree, which was grown by Yona for, for the shade, right, and shriveled up. So that type, the, the seed, uh, the, the oil from that tree, and Alma Rabba Bar, bar Chana, the Didi Chazi Kikayon de Yona. I actually was, once saw these type of trees, and it's Luvia Dummy, right? So he says over there, it looks like the, I, I, I looked it up, I Googled it, it was some sort of, you know, colorful plant. It's called, I don't know, the, the ricinus plant, there's ricinus oil, right? So type of ricinus plant, we partially rabbi, so um, and so he said over there. And we only um um the shike rabbi, and it grows from the uh, from the from the water. Yeah, and they used to go ahead and put it by the, the front of the storefronts. I guess it would create a lot of shade, right? And it would smell nice. Partzidu avde mishka, and from there they would go ahead and extract oil. Right, but Ofeim Nachian called Briche de Marav, and all those who were sick, who were weak, who needed the shade, would sit under these these very large, um, these very large, I guess, uh, 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 plants, which would produce seed and plenty of shade. Amar Rabba, and says says Rabba, Siloi Shamru, these different wicks that were mentioned in our Mishnah, Shamru Chachami Eima Ligemem B'Shabbos. So we said over there, you can't go ahead and light them on Shabbos. We play Shaur Misachas Vehen because the light does not base it flickers right it doesn't go ahead and and, and light smoothly and stay but rather it flickers and there it might go out or a person might come to go ahead and adjust the oil and therefore those wicks are forbidden and and, the, and those, those oils that we said cannot be used for fuel because those don't go ahead and continue after the wicks properly. Therefore, a person might come and go ahead and tilt his 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 remember his his, his candle, which basically had like a sort of like a dish with a wick coming out, and he might tilt it in order to add more oil to the uh, so more oil will go to the wick. So boy mine abaye mi rabo. So abaye ask kashim rabo. So shmanim shomer chachamim ein lemikim b'shabes mahu sheyitein l'seichan shemen kol shu v'yadik. So we said these oils, right? Let's say that you can't use, right? Let's say the first one uh, we said, let, let's say was um, the pish, right? Pish, right? The, the zephyrs, right? So you can't use pish. So what about if I go ahead and add some olive oil or some good oil, right, to the pitch, and it would cause the oil to, to be drawn properly to the wick, right? So mi gazrina and dilma asi leduke bana hiolo. Do we make zera? It says no. You can't add some olive oil to the pitch because if you do that, we allow that person might just use pitch alone or not. So I'm lay a madlikin. No, you can't light it in my time. Or lefish a madlikin. Right? You can't do it. Why is the reason? Because we don't light it. Because we don't light. We don't light the uh, the pitch or the wax, even if it, it, it was added with other uh, uh, materials which would allow it to draw properly. We don't do it because a person might come do it uh, by itself. 
So Ace we have Kasha, Karach Dovash Malikin Bo, Al Gabi Dovash Malikin Bo. So let's say you have this, this case. Now you have we were discussing oils. You want to combine oils. Let's say you want to go ahead and basically uh, combine wicks. In other words, you, we have wicks that you weren't allowed to use. And let's say you take something that you're allowed to make a wick out of, and you wrap that around something that you weren't allowed to. Okay, so now it's a combination of wicks, right? We said, let's say you can't make a wick out of the certain silks, right? So let's say you went ahead and you use something that a proper material uh, uh, to go ahead and, you know, some sort of string, whatever it is uh, around it. Can, can you do it? So the more answers, Ain my leaking bow. You're not allowed to do it. In other words, you're not allowed to go ahead and combine wicks, right? And Rabbi Shogun Lil, Rabbi Shogun Lil, so Rabbi Shogun Lil shall base Abba how you korchen psil agabi egos my leaking. And says Rabbi Shogun Lil, in my father's house, right? They used to go ahead and wrap a certain psil a wick, right, around the, a, a nut. They 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 were allowed to go ahead and 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 wrap it around a nut, which is something that you can't make a wick for, and it was okay. So you see, a combination was good. So Rabbi Shogun Lil argues. So Katani Mias never says Malikin. Nevertheless, we see that Rashi Gamliel, his father's house, they used to go ahead and combine a wick that you weren't supposed to use with the wick that you were supposed to use, and it was good enough. It was no problem. So Amr Le, at the most you leave me Rashi Gamliel, see Ani who made the Tanakama. I understand your Kasha. You're asking Kasha from Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Well, look at the Tanakama. The Tanakama said you're not allowed to do it. So it was Machlokes. So obviously it's not a Kasha on me because you're asking from Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. And I'll just say, I have the Tanakama who supports me, who says you're not allowed to go ahead and combine a good wick and a bad wick to be your wick for Shabbos. Uh, question. Question. Yeah. question. Um, isn't it the most important part is that the wick will not create what we call sparks? So if you wrap around its majority, even Batil Bashishim, you can call it, uh, wicks that are soft and proper, so that wick that can create spark is not effective anymore. So it is muta. Right. You so accor me? according to, to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, you're hundred percent correct. That according to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, since the, the light will remain good and there's no problem of it flickering, it's no problem. But according to the Tanakhama, why does he answer it? He, he answers it because if we allow you to use it in this case, maybe someone will see it next week and say, "Oh, I saw him use, uh -huh. you know, the uh -huh. this egos or something yeah. that." You can't use it, and therefore it's a gzeira, yeah, yeah. not to allow the others. Yeah. So nevertheless, the Gemara says, so I, you ask me a kasha, and it says, halo kasha, my seraf. It's that you have a my seraf. In other words, what's better than a machlokes? A machlokes, uh, if one decides, have a my seraf. And it was uh, uh, Rabbi Gamaliel, right? Or Shimon Gamaliel's father, Rabbi Gamaliel, would combine wicks. So it's a my seraf. So we call him kasha, it's a kasha. So my love, the halik, is it not mean that he wrapped around to light it? No, he didn't use the, the nut in that case to go ahead and to, to wrap, combine it with the other to, to, you know, to light it. Rather, he just used the nut to hold up the wick properly so it would be properly, uh, you know, the proper amount of the wick would be out of the oil. So he says, Eel Hakwas, my time does not come. If that's the case, so if it was just holding up the good wick, and the bad wick was holding up the good wick, and they weren't really combined and both were lit, so what would be the reason for the Tanakama? Why would the Tanakama asser and say you can't even hold up? So the answer is now cool of Shingle Mill he sorry Max. Really, this is all Rab Shingle Mill and it's missing a part of this Bryce. Well, this was how is it, how it should read. Karak Dava Shemalikimbo, I'll gabi Dava Shemalikimbo. If you go ahead and wrap something that you're allowed to go ahead and light around something that you can't go ahead and light, a malikimbo, you're not allowed to do that. However, but what are we talking about? The Halik, that's only if you light the two of them, if you light the two of them, Avala Bahakos. But if you're just using that which you can't go ahead and use as a wick to hold up, that which you can use as a wick. And you're only burning the good wick, mutter, then it's mutter. Why? Why? Because Rabbi Shogulil says that he testified that in his father's house, he used to go ahead and wrap um, a, um, uh, a, what's it called, a psila around an egos and he'll hold it up and to use it. So, Aini, is this true? Amarav, Bruno, Amarav, Chelev. It's like nowadays you, you, you see wicks that have a little. Uh, that are inserted into a piece of cork. And so the cork acts as a float on top oh, so of the yeah, oil. Yeah, right, right. So that's what Rabbi Gamaliel was, was being doing. used for. Right. He was using the nut as like this float. Right. On top of the, so that the, uh, the, the wick would at least stick up above the surface of the oil. Right. All right. Now, so the bar says, Omar Rav Bruna, 
Amar Rav. So now if you look at the Mishnah, remember, our Mishnah was discussing different fuels. And the last fuel mentioned was Veloi Bechelev, right? Now with Chelev, certain types of fats are, you can't use. So, I, Amar Rav, Barun, Amar Rav, Chelev Mehutach, the Dagim Shini Mehu. Adam Naisen L'Seich and Shem and Kol Shu. So if you have basically uh, um, fats, right, which, um, right, I guess were, were melted, right, and these type of uh, fats would, would, would not be normally permitted to use on its own. And also the innards of uh, fish also, Adam nice in the second Shem and Kalshu, Malik, a person can add a small amount of good oil with these other fuels, which are normally forbidden on their own, and light it. Right? So, so says, no, really you're wrong. Really, that which is melted fat, and I was that what you say in the mission is just chalev, but melted fats really, melted, uh, melted chalev, or the melted innards of a fish, really those mm-hmm. on their own, they, they, they do um, go ahead and properly fuel a wick, and it won't flicker. Nevertheless, those we hold, you can't do it, because if we allow those, you might come to go ahead and use the chalev that's not melted down, and therefore, really, those light uh, those light okay and it sounds normally the gazera, but that combined with good oil will say it's good. Because and therefore normally we, we forbid chalev, which is which is basically which is melted because of chalev that's not melted. And we also normally go ahead and uh, and, and and say the innards of fish, even though they're melted, are bad because even though those would fuel properly, nevertheless, because if the the innards were not melted properly, then they, it wouldn't go ahead and light, and therefore we make a xera on all innards of fish, even if it was melted down. I the leagues are now a chelev mehutach, the karve dagim shenimuchu shenasam seich and shemen. So why don't you go ahead and make another xera? Make a xera that even if you're already ossering the melted fats, the melted uh, innards, because of the ones that are not melted, why don't we also make a xera and say, even if you add good oil to the melted fats, the melted innards, it shouldn't work. Where answer is no. Mishum chelav mehutach v'karve dagim shenimuchah shelonas on the seichan shemen. He goof a gzera because that itself is a gzera. You know that itself is a gzera. V'ana nikum and nigzer gzera gzera. We're not going to make a double gzera. Now the original bad thing is um, the, the chelav, right? We'll just go with chelav, right? So therefore chelav. So the gzera is on melted uh, uh, melted chelav. You can't use melted chelav because of the uh, regular chelav. But we're not going to go ahead and make a gzera. And another thing to say that you can't add oil, right, to the melted uh, uh, chalev because the melted chalev itself is a gzera to the uh, unmelted um, bats. Fine. Now, so Tani, Rami, Berchamo, Pesilos, Vishmanim, Shamro, so the, the wicks and the oils we're talking about, Shamro, Chalami, Eim, Malikim, and Shabbos, those we mentioned, you mentioned, you can't go ahead and light on Shabbos. Eim, Malikim, and Mikdash, you can't also go ahead and use them in the base of Mikdash. Why is that? Meshim, Shinem, the Pasuk says, Lahalais, near Tomit. It says lahalos. It doesn't say lahalik. It says lahalos. Neir tamid. So who taught you who amar lo? And not only that, he not brought the, the, the pasuk, but he also darshan it. He says kadei shadei shall have us oila meilah. The light has to go up nicely by itself. It can't use other assistance. You don't need other things. So therefore, you should use something that is a proper light in the base of mitzvah when lighting the menorah there. And therefore, you should only use you shouldn't anything that will cause it to flicker or not uh, fuel properly. You you will not be able to use in the base of mitzvah. Uh, and that it should be able to be lit through a davaracher. So tonight we're going to mention. I believe we have How you mafkin mehen malikin? How you? So he says from the 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 the, the, the old um, uh, pants and belts of the kohanim. So they used to go ahead and mafkin mehen. Well, mehen malikin. They used to go ahead and tear them. Uh, now basically tear them into rags. And used to go ahead and light them and use those as the wicks. So in other words, they'd use the old pants that were the the the, the, the of the kohanim, right? They couldn't just be tossed away. So they would use it for purposes of lighting for wicks. They'd turn them into wicks. And Simcha's basis So the rest says no. So what do you see over there? So oh, so what are they made of? So the, the they are made over there. Um, and it's wool materials, were they? So we said earlier they can't use wool, right? So there's some wool there. So the Gora says, no, Simchas Beis Shreva Shani. Simchas Beis Shreva is different because over there it wasn't for the mitzvah uh, of the menorah, right? So their only mitzvah of the menorah has the special din of Lahalay Sneer Tamit, right? But when it comes to Simchas Beis Shreva during Sukkot's celebration, so therefore it was no issue of, of using other types of wicks. 
And Toshmak, unless the Tani Rabbi Vermasna, Bite Kuna Shavalu Machkino Isam. So the, the, the clothes of the Kohanim, right, they were coming apart. They used to go ahead and tear them out. So make, uh, make for them wicks in the Mikdash. So we see over there for burning. All right, so my love, the kiloi. So it says, isn't that for the kiloi, for the pants or the wool? It says, Lo, the boots, no, no, we're only talking about different materials, the materials that did not contain uh, uh, only linen and did not contain any of the other materials of the wool, and therefore it's not an issue. Fine. Now comes the Hanukkah Gemaras. Let's see, three lines from the bottom. And the Chof Aleph, Amad Aleph. Amar Rav Huna, Psilos, the Shmanim, the Sha'amru, the wicks and the oil that we've been discussing, you can't go ahead and light them. You can't use these bad wicks and the bad oils uh, and for Hanukkah, whether it's on Shabbos or whether it's during the week, right? Even you're lighting on a Tuesday night. And Amar Rav says, Rav, my time with the Rav Huna, what's the reason called Rav Huna? So there's only two reasons here. So the first reason is Kavsa Zakukla. So the first halacha, uh, the first svara is that if your candles go out, do you have to go ahead and relight it? So the machlekas and the, the gemaras will soon see. So if you hold that once I light my Hanukkah candle properly, and for whatever reason it goes out, right? Zakukla, I have to go ahead and relight it. Or I have to go ahead and relight it. I have to make sure it burns for whatever it will soon see, uh, the amount of time it has to burn and for when it has to burn, but I have to go ahead and relight it. Now, if I use a bad wick, right, or a bad oil, and I light it, and then I leave, I might not relight it, and therefore I won't fill the mitzvah. So therefore, we don't want you to use bad wicks or bad, uh, bad oil to begin with. And then that's one case. And the other, the, the other halach, uh, um, svar here is, umutu lishtamish lera. Is one allowed to go ahead and use a light? Now, this is be more of an afkamin on Shabbos, because on Shabbos, if you're allowed to use the light, and it's a bad wick, Right, then you might come to be Maver Esh and Shabbos. So, therefore, the big zero. So, in this case, if you already hold that you're not in Zakukla, you, you, right, we don't care if it goes out, and you're not allowed to rebuy it on Shabbos, there is no reason to say, right, so, uh, so therefore, uh, oh, excuse me, and you're allowed to go ahead and use Shabbos, and you can use it on Shabbos. So, therefore, you will not be allowed to use these, uh, the, the wicks or oil at all, even during the week. And Rav Chiz Domar, and comes opinion number two, Rav Chiz Domar, Malikim ben Bechol of Alobi Shabbos. You're allowed to use it during the weekday and for, for Hanukkah, but you can't use it on Shabbos, Shabbos Hanukkah. Why is it for your menorah? Why is that? Of Alobi Shabbos, why? Because he holds Kavsa, if it goes out, in Zakukla, I don't care. Now, as long as I light it properly in the beginning, it's not fuel, even if it goes out, I, I don't have to go ahead and relight it. Therefore, you're allowed to go ahead and use these bad wicks during the week, <laughs> right? But in the but I'm allowed to go ahead and use the Hanukkah menorah light and read by it on Shabbos. So therefore, if I go ahead and use bad wicks and I read by it on Shabbos, I might come to go ahead and tilt the the, the, the candles so they burn better. And therefore, so it's forbidden to light these Han- these these uh, candles for Hanukkah on Shabbos. And Amr Abzera, Amr Ramas, Amr Abzera, Amr Rab. Here's the third opinion. No, opposite. Those that we say you can't use on Shabbos, you're actually allowed to go ahead and use them for Hanukkah, whether it's during the week or it's on Shabbos. Why is that? I'm Rabbi Yirmiya, my time out, the Rav, what's the reason? Rav, Zakla. First of all, if it goes out, you don't have to relight it. So therefore, you're allowed to light it during the week because if it goes out, we don't care. As long as you lit it properly in a place that it, was, it should have uh, stayed and for whatever reason, the wick went out or the oil went out, it didn't draw to the wick, you have already fulfilled the obligation. And they'll also the Shabbos letter, and you're not allowed to read by the menorah. So since you're not allowed to read by the menorah, so therefore, if it goes out on Shabbos or if it's flickering in Shabbos, you're not going to go ahead and tilt it because you're not allowed to read by it anyways. So you're not going to be near that candles, right? So you're not going to be near that candle, and therefore, um, Ein Zakukla. Fine. Um, so Ein Zakukla, but also the Shabbos letter. So Amr Rav Avon and Kamei Dabai, so said the Rav Avon before Abaye, Bishmei the Rav Yirmiya, the Loi Kibla. So they originally said to the Abaye in the name of Rav Yirmiya, he was a Makabot. However, Kiyos the Rav and Amr Rav Avon and Kamei Dabai, Bishmei the Rav Yirmiya. But later on, they said this before Abaye in the name of Rav Yirmiya, the Kibla, and then he was Makabot. And Omar and said Abaye, I Zaka Gimirasa the Shmei Semei Karo. 
So, the, so he says, oh, I wish I would have listened to you the first time. You know, he filmed the first time. It wasn't Makabal the Shita. And then afterwards, he's Makabal the Shita that he can use the, uh, these wicks and for, 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 for Hanukkah feather during the week or on Shabbos. And only later on, he was Makabal. And he's, he was basically had remorse that he did not go ahead and was Makabal earlier. So the Gemara says, I have a hug. So, okay, he learned it. Who cares? What's an Afkin? It's an Afkinino, the gears of the Inukasa, right? The Afkin is you learn something from your youth. You learn something from your youth. Right, you, you hazard over and over, and therefore it would have been a better halacha, it would have been something that he would have taught over and over, and uh, it would have stuck with him better, and he would have taught it over to others. So now the Gemara says, the kavsa ain't What do you mean? If it goes out, you don't have to go ahead and relight it. I, Ramini, as your kasha, mitzvasa, mitzvatishka, chama, ad shetichla, regalmin, ashuk. The mitzvah is from when the sun sets until right, the people uh, uh, stop, you know, until basically the, uh, the people stop. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the marketplaces are closing, right? You know, until the, you know, it literally means until the legs stop in, in the marketplace. But we see over here, what does it mean? And other words, until the, basically the, 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 you know, the marketplace closed down. So I understand, it seems to be that you have to light it between sunset and the time that the, 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 when the shut closes down. So I understand. So if it goes out five minutes after the sunset, you still have to keep it lit until uh, so my love, the kavsa hadam alikla, is it not telling you that no? If it goes out, you have to go ahead and, and light it. it. Says low. It means to tell you what is the halacha di lo alik malik, right? He can tell you two things. One thing is maybe it's telling you if you have not lit yet, and it's during that time, there is still a mitzvah to go ahead and light it. But if you, for whatever reason, you only have the ability to go ahead and light it, perhaps after achitikla mina shuk, you know, only afterwards you had ability. Maybe you wouldn't have to do it. Or v'inami l'shira, maybe it means a shear, right? Maybe let's say it's a half hour that it takes from the time of mishadishka chama to ashetigle v'meoshuk. Maybe it's telling you a shear of how long your Hanukkah candles have to be lit, and maybe it's telling you not it has to be specifically during that specific time, but maybe it's telling you that it has to be lit for at least a thirty-minute period, just like the amount of time mishadishka chama ashetigle regular v'meoshuk. Fine. So to that, right? Until the tamudois, until they leave the shuk. Now, who are the tamudois? Those are the people who used to go ahead and provide. Basically, they would sell wood. They would sell wood. People use wood for fire. People use wood for light. They use wood for fuel. So therefore, they would be the basically the last sellers in the shuk, right? Because people would go home and they might need to come back to the shuk to get to go ahead and basically fuel their fires or fuel their homes. So therefore. Those are basically the last people in the shuk. So in other words, you have to wait until basically the, the, the end people of the shuk until they leave. Uh, and that was the, the, the proper time of Ashi Tichla Rebbe Menashe. So turn around button. Mitzvah Chanukah Ner Ish Ubeso. The mitzvah of Chanukah is Ner Ish Ubeso is basically one candle per house for every night. In other words, one, as Rashi says, Ner Echad B'chol Laila, V'ish B'chol B'nei Beiso, Sagle B'ner Echad. And was one, all you do is light one candle, and you light one candle every single night, even if you have five people in your home. But Mahadran, if you want to be Mahadran, you be from, then you do Ner L'chol Echad V'echad, then you light one candle for each and every person. So you have five people in your home, the first night you light five candles, second night you light five candles, third night five candles, so on and so forth. But Mahadran and Mahadran, when you want to be the from of the from, right? The Mahadran and Mahadran, the best way, Beishamai says the first day you light eight, eight, and then the next day you, you take it down. The next day you light seven, then six, then five, then four. Beishel Oimim, Beishel says, Yom Risha Malik, which is like what we do. Beishel Oimim, Yom Risha Malik, and the first day you light one. Mikan Vedach, Maisif, Behalach, and every day you light an additional one. So you one, next day is two, next day is three, so on and so forth. And Omar Ula, so what's this far here? So Omar Ula, pligi ba tre manoi to machlois to a rabbi ma rabbi ner sral rabbi yisib ba rabbi rabbi yisib ba zvida. Chad Omar tamad de beishami kenegid yamin nechnasim, but tamad de beisilo kenegid yamin yaitzim. One of them say that the reason of beishami is because the amount of days that are coming. And now on day one we have eight days coming, so including tonight. So therefore you light eight candles on the first day, and then the next night number two you have seven days tonight, and the, you know the next six nights which is total seven you light seven. And Beis Hillel says, no, the days that pass. So today is the first night, and therefore the, tomorrow is the second night, so therefore the, you know, they're pretty late too, and so on and so forth. The Chad Omar, and the other, uh, uh, the other Rabbi Yaisi said, Chad Omar, Tam Beis Shammai, Kneged Parechad. So Beis Shammai says, you know, you look around uh, throughout the Torah, find places, other scenarios, where you have numbers that are either going up or going up or going down. 
and it, it goes off one every day. And one of the example was the the bull offerings that were um, that were offered on Sukkot. The bull offerings that started, I think, at fourteen, and it went down every day by one, right until uh, seven, and then it jumps to Shmuel Tzaris is right uh, is, uh, uh, one. Anyway, so the bull offerings go down by one every day. So therefore, so over here, we go down by one every day. So in other words, we learned that as an example of when you have either ascending or descending, you go down by one, learn from the parechag. But time of the Beis what's because of the Beis Hillel? Because we go up in Kedusha, we go up uh, in, in, in holiness, so we don't go down. So therefore, it wouldn't be appropriate to start eight and then go down. Rather, uh, since we want to go ahead and count the amount of nights and have different every night to show a greater miracle, so therefore, which way should we go up or down? You'll, you'll start low and go up because Malin Bekoidish Vein Marit. And Omar Rabbi Rachan, Omar Rabbi Yechan, Shane Zakinoy Yubitsida, and there are two Zakin and Sida, Nachalai Sikabe Shama, Bechalai Sikabe Beshilo. One did like Beshamai, that the first day he lit eight, then seven, and six, and the next, and the other one did like Beshilo. And Zen, I said, Tan Tvar, Kanagad Parechag. And this one said, the reason why I did it is because you go down one day because the, the, the bull offerings by uh, Sukkot. The one says, no, 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 we, you add one every day because we go up in Kedusha and we do not go down. So, so the Ner Hanukkah is the mitzvah to leave it outside your Pesach and the Chatzir uh, right? outside, right? Um, and Rashi says, because, because of Persumanisa, because of Persumanisa, you put it outside so people can see that there's a candle outside and they say, oh, tonight is the, the mitzvah of uh, Hanukkah. And Rashi does point out, not she's a rabbin, right? But only in his chatzer, because there's other uh, houses that share the same chatzer, and therefore you put it out by his entranceway. And im hayadar baliyah, if the guy lived upstairs and he did not have his own pesach, manicha becholon asmuk l'shis rabbin, he would go ahead and put it in his window uh, close to the shis rabbin to face the outside, and people would be able to go ahead and see the pesum anisa. V'shas is sakana, and during the times of sakana when the, the, the Gaim had restrictions on lighting candles, that the only place you can light candles is in the house of idol worship. So therefore, you cannot go ahead and light a candle outside. They will go ahead, Manicha, al shachana they will be, be able to go ahead and light it inside their house and you know, close the windows, and that would be enough. And Omar, Rava says, Rava, and if you do that, Sarich, Ner Acheres, Lishtamish, you have to have another candle, right? A Shamash, you have to have another candle inside, because if you go ahead and use the light, Right then, um, so then you realize that there's right there's right Rashi's last is hekel davar right in the Now it has to be uh, so recognizable that the reason is not for lighting right the, uh, that the reason is for a mitzvah and if you need the light that you have the extra light. And the ikamadura. However, if there's a large fire in there and you don't really need extra light, light sech, then you don't need extra light. However, the adam chashuv if it's adam chashuv who normally does not use a torch or madura. Afagav the Ikam Madura, even though there is a Madura, nevertheless, Tzrich Tzrich Nerches, you need another candle basically to show that you're not, that because maybe he has this candelabra or this, you know, this, this menorah lit for him reading because he doesn't use a, menor, a, a, a Madura, so therefore you light an extra candle. Fine, two dots. So my Chanukah, what is Chanukah the Tan Rabbanu Bechaf Hebi Kisla? You made the Chanukah. Timne Inun. So what is it? On the 25th of Kisla is the days of Chanukah. And there are eight days, eight of them. You don't go ahead and make haspedim, make eulogies in those days. You don't, we don't fast in those days. Because when the Greeks came into the Heichal, Timu Kolashmanin, they were matame. They um, defiled all the oils and they opened up the, um, uh, any oils and access and they touched them. And they were matame, the oils, because they broke the seals. Shebe Heichal, in the Heichal. Uh, and when the Heichalim, when they came back and they fought back and they, they drove the Yifanim out, the Nitzchum and they won, they only found one oil left, they needed to light the menorah, they only found one little jar left of oil, and on there was still the unbroken seal of the Kohen Gadol. They only had enough to light one day. So it was a nice that it lasts for eight days. In other words, because why? It took eight days for them to get the oil back, whether it was because they were tame and they had to go ahead and be matire themselves, which is seven day process, only the eighth day, or perhaps it was, it was a far voyage to go ahead and get the oil four days there, four days back. So whatever it was, but the oil lasted for eight days. And the Shana Acheres in the following year, Kabul Biasim, you may have been tovim, the Hallel of the Hoda. And then the coming year, it's in the established eight days as Yavin mm-hmm. Tovim with Hallel and Hoda. They were trying to be Machmer about uh, Tuma and Tara. Right, because right. Since 
uh, yeah, everybody it's... was Tame anyway. They could have lit the, the uh, menorah, right. but so, they so... were trying to be machmer on themselves. That it should only be lit bitahara. Bitahara, right. All right. So Tan Hossam, gates hayayitim mitachas apathish. If you have a, 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 um, a, a flicker, a what's it called, a, a spark that comes out from a person's banging a hammer, yatza vihizik, and it goes out and damages, let's say it catches fire to someone's hay. Chayim, he's chayim for damages because he wasn't careful of the sparks coming out from his, his hitting. And similarly, Golan Shaton Pishton, who Ivy Bishisarabim, a person was traveling, he loaded up his, his camel and was carrying flax and he was walking in Shisarabim, the Nikhans of Pishton was Soychachanos, and then his, it was so overloaded that as he's walking by a store shop, some of the flax that was on the camel basically went into the airspace of the uh, store, the Soychachanos, the Dalka. And then it lit on fire, B'nei Roshel Chanvani, of the candle that was inside the store, V'hilik es Abira, and then it went ahead, and it basically lit everything on fire, Baal HaGom The owner of the camel is Chayiv because he should have been careful how much he loaded his camel, and therefore, since his camel protruded into the Roshus HaYachid of the Chanvani, therefore, the owner of the camel is Chayiv. However, let's say the Chanvani took his candle and he let it outside, then, and the, the guy, the owner of the camel walked by with his flax, then, then the store keeper is high because what are you doing leaving a candle in Shusha Rabbim? However, Rabbi Yehud Oimer, why are we bringing this down? Rabbi Yehud Oimer, but Ner Chanukah Pater. If it was Ner Chanukah, then he's Pater. Why? Because it, normally in the case, you're high because who, you have no permission to go ahead and put a candle into the Shusha Rabbim. However, over here, since it is Chanukah and it was a mitzvah, so therefore it was a mitzvah to go ahead and put it out because of Pirsum Anissa. He put it there, right? Many kashas on this, and I was just, you know, when I was learning it, uh, first of all, why is it, you know, it's not his house, why is he letting his house, why is his permission? Also, we said earlier, not just a rabbin. So, you have to understand, right, so obviously we see that the Chanvani was supposed to go ahead and light it um, outside his, um, outside his store. Now, and Amar Avina, Zay Samaras, Ner Chanukah, Mitzvah, Anicha, Besaych, Asar. It must be that the Ner Chanukah is Mitzvah to leave it within 10 Tvachim of the ground. Why? These Sagarai Lamalami Asara, if it's above 10, the reason why it lit on fire was on the bottom. So, Le Malay, Havi Lachola, Ner Lamalami Gomo. Why? Because the guy could have said, Hey, what do you do? Why did you, maybe you're, you're Mr. Soren or your Chayyab, because why did you leave the candle on the floor? If you would have put the candle higher up, there, there wouldn't have been a fire in the first place. So obviously, since the Chanvani is Pater, it must be that he was allowed to, or it's a mitzvah for him to leave it close to the ground. So the says, no, the Dilma, no, tuva mitzvah. No, perhaps that will say that if we would go ahead and require him to go ahead and put it up, then he might not do it at all. So therefore, we, we allowed him to go ahead and just leave it on the ground. And one final line, because I always like to get to the next page. Amr of Kana, Dorosh of Nasr, Brahman Yumi, Mishmei, De Rabbi Tanchum. Ner, Shelchanika, so the light of the candle, if it was, if it was put, placed higher than 20, then it's psula. It's not good because a person won't go ahead and notice the Hanukkah candles if they're too high. So if it's above 20 amos, it's possible just like a sukkah that's too tall and just like a mavoy, which is used by Erevin, uh, is also if it's too high, then it doesn't work. Uh, today is Friday, right? So we'll, we'll stop here. Everyone should have a wonderful day. Uh, Sunday morning, Mirza Shem at 7.30, we'll do uh, two blots and we'll continue with this. Uh, yes, sir.